Okay, so now that you understand the basic layout of Moodle and how it looks to you and to the student, um, let's take a look at your teacher interface and how you can start to create your website and make some changes. Um, you'll notice that Sunny Student is still logged in, so we'll log her out and I'll log myself in as a teacher. All of you will receive unique logins and IDs from the district so that you'll have access to creating pages. You'll notice what has changed on Sylvania Schools Moodle once I do that. Site administration and courses appears over to the left. So let's talk first about how you can create your own course. Um, if you click on courses and add edit courses, you can click on add a new course. And if I were creating a course at the district level, I would go into the district category, add a new course, and I would see a number of course settings here. Um, at this point when you're creating a course, it's only important that you create the course with its name. You can modify all of these settings later. In fact, that's part of this video. I'll show you how to commit to these settings, um, change them, and you can change them at any point. I will not create a new course right now um, because I already have my Moodle sample page, so I'll cancel out of this. But just to remind you, if you wish to create a course, you would go to Courses, Add Edit Courses, check your level, Northview High School, Southview High School, District, add a new course, and start making those changes. I, of course, already have the sample page, so I'll take a look at that. Imagine I've just created this, and I'm opening it. Let's take a look up here in the top right. You can see that I am logged in as the, uh, as the user, and I am the teacher of this course, so I have access to change a, a lot of what's going on. Um, I can edit, and I can switch my role at any time that I'd like. This is pretty useful. If I want to see what the page looks like to me, let's say I'm turning the editing on, everything becomes quite a bit busier. You can see the commands that have opened in all of these blocks. And I can add resources, add activities. Everything in this page is now becoming a little bit more complex because I'm a designer and not just a user. If I ever want to see what it looks like for a student, and it's important to understand what your users see, I can click student. And now it looks exactly as a student would see it and then I can return to my normal role as teacher anytime I want to. So that's pretty useful, but let's take a look over administration. The administration block will allow you to uh, command and control the website in a number of levels. Importantly, you want to take a look at settings. Settings help you define the way this page looks, set up your blocks in the middle. For instance, you can see that I've set up blocks according to different topics and I have set up 10 blocks on my main page. Let's take a look at settings and see how you would do that. I can change where my course is located. Right now it's located at the district level. I can change the name. The short name is the name that appears up here in the navigation tree. So you can see that sample is my short name. Sample is what appears here. Course ID number um, you can or you need not include and uh, you may wish to do that if you want to keep easy access to your course number. Notice that everything that's in red is important. That is necessary. So you must complete that information in order to create the page. At any time, if you're unsure about what any of this um, does, then you can click on the question mark and that will pop open a little window that will give you information about uh, what exactly that command does. So I've created a, a summary here, and the summary is useful when somebody is searching for courses and they access a directory and they want to see what each course is about. Then they'll pop open not only the name of the course, but the summary of the course. And writing that summary will help people understand at a directory level what each course is doing. The format. Remember what I showed you on the main page. So let's go back to the main page. My format right now is organizing according to topics. I like to organize my course according to units. And 
So each block is a unit of study. In fact, I can show you that really quickly with something like my Honors English 10 page. Each of the blocks on my page is a different subject. So I have different units, uh, Greek tragedy, Shakespeare, individual reading assignments, sentence diagramming. So I like to organize according to topics. But, so I'm back to the Moodle sample page, you can access it according to topics like that, or you could create an access for a weekly format. And a weekly format is the other preferred model. If you present a weekly format, that will present blocks that are organized according to week. I like to organize my course according to topic and unit, but you may like to organize your course according to week, what is going on on a week-by-week -week basis. And if that's the case, then weekly blocks will appear. And on the main page, you would see a block that says, for this week, this is what's going on. Here are the relevant links and important downloads for the week. Here's the quiz for that week. Here's your homework. And uh, students can access that way. I can create the number of weeks or topics that I like. And right now, I'm only using two. So I might drop that down to two and look at the benefit of that. I save my changes. And you can see that now only two blocks appear. I like to keep my blocks um, down to the number that I'm actually using. So there are no empty blocks to uh, muddle the page and make it difficult for me to understand what's going on as a student or as a designer. Back into the settings, I I'll not cover all of these settings. I'll, I'll cover some of the more important ones. Many of these are fairly easy to understand. Um, you can start your course date whenever you wish. Um, the sections, the, the sections in the middle, those blocks in the middle, when you collapse them, as I've shown you before in the basic layout video, do you want to see that they're collapsed or do you want them to totally go away? You have the option for your visual design. Um, we are not accessing a grade book at any point. Uh, force theme, this is the visual design. I'm using ocean blue right now, but you can play around with whatever sort of color design. The color designs and themes are relatively limited for us in, in Sylvania schools here with Moodle, but you can find something that should be pretty uh, useful for you visually. Um, if you want students to enroll in your course, then you can connect, you can modify the enrollment settings. So you could modify the duration of the course. When does the course start? Maybe it starts on May 19th and ends um, on 2012 and ends on May 19th, 2013. You can allow students to enroll only for a set number of days up to 365 or you give them unlimited access. So this is housekeeping and you may use it um, or you may not use it. You may just turn all of these off so that you do not limit the enrollment at all and students can enroll for as long as they want but uh, you may wish to kick students off after a certain period of time. That is, uh, that is up to you. The enrollment um, expiration notification tells a student when, they're going, when they will be unenrolled from a course. So if they wish to re-enroll for some reason, you can do that. Moving down to availability, um, you can make the course available to students. You can make it unavailable to students. You can close it. Um, you can create a key an enrollment key for the course and unmask means I look at that key and right now my key is Moodle with a capital M. Um, you would give them that key and that means they would be able to enroll in your course but others without the key would not. Guest access. I allow guests without the key into my website. This is pretty important. Some people don't like to do this but I can't see why you wouldn't unless you're really posting sensitive information. The reason is parents. Parents may not have the students' access. The students might not give it to them, or the student might forget it. And you want anybody um, to be able to access the course material because parents want to see what's going on. So I allow guests without the key. You can include um, names of the responsible parties in here. And once again, that will list on a directory. So if I save my changes that's what the settings do. 
and you've changed the visual design, um, the way that the, the blocks are arranged in the, the middle section, the main course section of your site, and you've given access to students to enroll in your course. Of course, you can go back to settings at any time that you would like and make changes. If that's not working for you, you can add blocks, you can remove blocks, you can change the theme, you can change the, change the enrollment settings. And that's pretty much it for modifying the settings for your Moodle page.